Now with today's lesson is Dr. Lester Sumrall. I'm sure that we're aware that uh, there are elevations of truth. Uh, there's truth that's purely historic, you know. And, and there's, there's truth that uh, is just knowledge. And yet there's truth that is pertinent. There's truth that has to do with where you're going to be tomorrow and what you're going to be doing in eternity. We believe that the study that we're taking on the battle for immortality uh, actually uh, is pertinent truth that all of us need to give keen observation to. The Lord spoke to my spirit and told me that in the world that we're living uh, right now, that every major evil was a direct blow at the immortality of man, wanting to destroy him, wanting to degrade him, debase him, and to remove him from the dignity that God created him to have. And that we should battle these sins that seek to destroy the immortality of man. And in, in your present lesson called Permissiveness and Immortality, uh, permissiveness in America, maybe it's America's newest fad. Uh, what is considered the, the new morality uh, preaches permissiveness to our generation in which we live today. The Ten Commandments are called out of date. By, by many, and humanism uh, teaches that man, men and women can do what they feel like doing. And, and if they feel like doing it, they ought to go ahead and do it. Uh, we don't feel that you can have a society uh, successful on such a basis. Some of our colleges and universities permit and sometimes promote and encourage what we call permissiveness. And they do it mostly through their leadership and through their teachings. Permissiveness is not new. This we ought to know. Permissiveness has always been. Sodom knew a, a strong form of permissiveness. No doubt in the beginnings of it in that capital city, uh, it was looked down upon and, 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 and very slowly it rose to the top until it governed the state, until it was the the thing that they were known by 3,000 years later, you want to know the country for one thing, the type of sin that, that prevailed, called sodomy from Sodom. God destroyed, God destroyed that city, state, for the simple reason that it was a, a blow against immortality, and, and it ceased to be. Open your Bibles to the book of Jude, which is the next to the last a uh, book in the entire Bible. Uh, in verse 4, it says, For there are certain men cre crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness, and denying the Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, and are set forth as an example of suffering the vigilance of eternal fire. They are an example of it. Likewise, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, speak evil of dignitaries. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally is brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. Here the Word of God is speaking out strong against permissiveness. Where we do as we please, anywhere we please, any way that we please. Where did this modern spirit of permissiveness originate, please? It is believed that modern permissiveness was incubated in the philosophy that man was a mere animal. That has been prevalent in our land for the last 50, 60 years, very strong in our universities. And that his total instinct should be released for fulfillment of his desires. When in our philosophies of our universities, man ceased to be created by God, made in the image of God, <laughs> that he was only an elevated animal, 
That gave him the same permission that a dog has to be a stray dog. Permissiveness began in the textbooks, strongly supported by psychology and psychiatry. Philosophy, psychiatry, psychology, working together to tell human beings that they had permission to do as they felt like doing. The human mind can be harnessed and trained in positive, creative functions. Or it can be reduced to stupidity, same mind, foolishness, same mind, and finally to insanity, the same human mind. In Romans 1 and 23 it says, And that they change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man, their idols, and to birds and four-footed beasts, and I've seen these gods in their temples many times, and of creeping things. Now this is an exact picture of a heathen temple. And the priests will tell you that these are subordinate deities. They've told me that every time. That God, the great one, they dare not approach. And so they have to work with these lower deities that look like half bird, half person, half animal, half man. In the next verse in Romans 1, it says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, you see, through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Why? Verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. No place in the universe has such an indictment been made except in the word of God. The Bible is the only place you'll find it. Man made his own religious rules and made his own religious gods. And they give him permission to live as he pleases. And your point number three on, verse, on, chap, on page 84, it says there are many forms of religious heresy that have been born of permissiveness in the world of spirit, for example. There's apostasy. Apostasy is a falling away from the faith, giving you permission, 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 <laughs> until you have lost God. The cults, the cults come in with a lie. The cults every time will say, yes, we believe in Jesus Christ, we accept the Bible. That's two lies right there. They do not accept the Lord Jesus Christ as the only begotten Son of God and the only door to heaven. They don't believe that. And so they slide in easily on permissiveness. Demon worship encourages blasphemy and hatred of Jehovah God. Anywhere you find a deep penetration into demon worship, it's always with bitterness and hatred toward the living God. Spiritism is the same. They say, oh, yes, you can be a Christian, be a spiritist, no problem at all. Then they start naming out all the preachers <laughs> that have been spiritists. Oh, yes, hell, I have a lot of preachers in them, as well as deacons. Are you here or not? Yeah, yeah the Bible says the pure in heart will see God, and that's all. Your, your, your little tag you wear around with you has no credentials related to it. If you're going to heaven, it's going to go because you've got a good heart. Your sins have been forgive, forgiven by the blood of Jesus and you're clean. Amen. And all of us need to know that. When we get into things like transcendental meditation, which we will mention further, and ESP, these are areas where you are given total permissiveness to do whatever you feel like doing. There's no attachment to holiness nor purity or godliness or, or receiving the Bible just exactly as it is. Almost any of these cults will say, yes, we believe the Bible contains God. It does not. Every word in the Bible is God spoken and is God ordained and is God anointed. The total Bible is God's inspiration and revelation. And we don't accept a part of it being that. We either take all of it or none of it. And we have chosen to take it all. Can you say amen? Amen. On, on your page 85, your recent studies indicate that many uh, therapists agree in sex with their patients. Now, at the bottom of page 84, before we get over there, this is an area most people think about when they have the word uh, permissiveness. The world is suffering what is called a silent, a silent epidemic. There are 2,700,000 uh, new infections of gonorrhea each year from permissiveness. In some countries, it has gone up to 10% of the population annually. Perversion with oral sex and homosexuality has brought millions into several types of social diseases, especially in the mouth and the throat. 
I, I want to speak out against something here that I haven't before, and, and that, is, that is oral sex. Uh, no man, especially a Christian man, has a right to, to, to abuse his wife in the area of oral sex. In, in this city, uh, in the last few months, several women, their husbands would have had a fit and died on it. If he had known about it, have come and asked me to pray for them that they're having to give that man oral sex in order to satisfy him. Now, now that man needs a trip to the altar because that's in this area of permissiveness that we're talking about. You give yourself over to that and you'll have another one coming up soon. The devil never stops. When he gets you going toward left field, brother, he's got a lot of left fields out there. And the last one on the other end of it is hell. And if he can get you with a permissive attitude of where this is not too bad, and that's not too bad, and the other's not too bad, there is no end to it. Are you here or not? I, I don't believe it is right in a home to tolerate such things, and you don't have to, in Jesus' name. All right. Uh, perversion called with oral sex or homosexuality has brought millions into several types of social diseases so forth through their permissiveness. There are many strains of social disease such as herpes, a simplex virus, HSV-1, HSV-2, and so forth. In their recent studies, therapists uh, engage in sex with their patients. Uh, I think what uh, people need to know, and very few people are willing to honestly uh, realize it, that a doctor happens to be a man usually, and that a patient usually happens to be a woman. And it happens that he closes the door when she's there. And it happens that being a man unconverted and her being a woman unconverted, that it just happens that they start resolving each other's problems. And millions of times it falls into a, in, into, into a moral abuse. And if you think that's terrible, you just don't understand what a man is. Are you still here? Yeah, without God, he's something close to a beast, you know. He'll take anything he can get, then steal it off of his neighbor. Without God. That's what salvation's all about, changing a man's nature. Without Adamic nature, uh, he will go after anything he can get a hold of, you see. And, and so it's Jesus that turns a man's heart around and makes him different, different from that. I'd like for you to study that a little carefully on your own. Uh, I, I would appreciate it. It has some, some uh, statistics there for you. On some college campuses in the United States, students are given free contraceptives from their medical centers. Uh, that, that, to me, is permissiveness. That's what we're talking about. That, that is permissiveness. And uh, in a survey done by, by London Sunday Times, the largest paper in Britain, uh, it was discovered that sexual fidelity on the part of the spouse was listed at 11, 11 out of 13 factors which make for a happy marriage. <laughs> that they got down almost off the list uh, before they decided uh, that, that fidelity had anything to do with happiness at all. And, and so when a people have got, become so permissive, they don't even know right and wrong. You're headed for a world of trouble and sorrow and, and, and heartaches and... and uh, and all kinds of misery for children, grandchildren, grandparents. The whole society will find itself swept away in a horrible mess. Permissiveness is a poison. It will poison the whole body of the, of the American society if we don't turn that thing around by the power of God. Can you say amen? amen. Now, uh, Dr. Dr. Alfred Charles uh, Kinsey uh, gave you some statistics a few years ago that none of us wanted to believe, none of us wanted to accept. He first did it in 1948 and shocked the daylights out of the whole nation. And, and then he did it again in, in, in 1953 and, and told you how, how tremendous a percentage of the American males and the American females uh, that had become lax, that had become permissive, and, and had lost their virtue, had lost their virtue. In your H on page 85, pornography, uh, through sex, films, blatant sexual and violent acts on television and movies, the liberal decisions by politicians and judicial representatives, and the, open, the openly immoral lives of many national and entertainment figures have led our nation into a permissive attitude. We've got it. 
Many crimes and violent sex acts have been committed according to the, to the role presented on the screen. And, and, and they have gone right after those things. They have duplicated them in, in our regular lives. So our society has become so permissive that many times large groups have stood around and watched innocent victims be raped. You remember in New York where there was 30 or 35 that saw it without trying to stop the crime and not even dialing the police. It is a sad state when a nation uh, loses its conscience. Loses its conscience. So statistics prove that sexual permissiveness it, it, it takes its toll on individuals and families that every time the couple has, and this is, this is very strong, every time the couple has premarital sex, they'll experience three negative things. Guilt feelings the rest of their life, fear, and loss of esteem or self-regard. There's your problems that you have to live with. A girl who has premarital sex is twice as likely to have extramarital sex as a girl who, who was a virgin when she was married. So you marry a girl that's been playing around, uh, you've got something on your hand twice as bad as any other average girl that was a virgin when she was married. That if you play around before, you'll play around after. It gets in your blood. Permissiveness is permissiveness. And you break down that much moral fiber. And if you don't come to God and let him build you some moral fiber, you, you, you need some. You need some. In Revelation 21 and 8, it says the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You'll notice here that those who are whoremongers that are, that are permissive, that they're right in there with sorcerers or, or witch doctors and right in there with murderers. Isn't that something? When God looks at sin, he looks at the total spectrum of sin. And it don't take big sin to take you to hell. It just takes sin, period, to take you to hell. And 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, he says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators nor idolatry. See, they put fornication and adultery uh, within a quarter of an inch of each other. Nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers them, themselves of mankind. Uh, these are those that have come permissive, permissive in their attitude. Now, dealing with permissive and in, 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 in destroying immortality, and it will destroy immortality. We cannot live on the level of, uh, 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 of animals. We've got to live on a level that God made us. And he, he made us in his own image and his own likeness. And we're supposed to live clean, pure lives. Amen. All right. Now let's, we, we mentioned the occult. Let's go a little deeper in the occult on page 87. This subject was never so necessary as it is right now. Millions are involved in various occult practices. I mean millions. I mean in our country, not, not, not Haiti or Brazil. Uh, and Deuteronomy 18 and 9 says, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, this is God talking to those people of Israel, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Now that, that's what God means. You and I don't have to learn after the abominations of people around us. In 1 Timothy 4 and 1 it says, The Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times, which are today, some shall depart from the faith, and not just simply backslide, but shall give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The three known powers of our universe are these. God's power, which is divine, positive, benevolent. Man's power, man does have power. It's a natural force which can lead to either divine or demonic operations. The devil's power, his energy is always malevolent. <laughs> you say, does, does the devil heal? The devil's nature is not to heal. He brought disease to this earth he, because disease is part of death. And he brought death to this earth and disease is limited death. That's all disease is. Disease is limited death. And he brought death to this world and the disease he pulled along with him. None of it came from God. And death nor disease came from God. How many preachers heard that? Who don't have any compromise there. Or you're get into a, in, in getting into a permissive feel of sliding. It's better to go the other way and, and to be a, a, a little harder than you ought to be than to be a little looser. Because that leads into further looseness. Can you say amen? amen. 
Now, in your point number two, why man turns to a cult? Now, 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 millions of Americans are going into it right now. Why do they do it? Man without God reaches for the unknown and the supernatural. That is true. That is true, whether it's in India or whether it's in New York City or whether it's in Paris, France. It is true. God is holy and can be reached through the blood of Jesus Christ. God can be reached. Brother, when you get the mighty power of the Holy Ghost tingling through your, through your being, you've got a big high. You've got a high bigger than the devil can ever climb up to. The occult can be reached without holiness or goodness. You can be taken in and initiated into witchcraft. And they can make you start naked and lay you down on an altar if you're a female. And that four or five warlocks uh, 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 have, have intercourse with you right there on the, on the witch's altar. You see, talk about permissiveness. They've got it made. They've got it made. Man without God reaches for the unknown. He reaches for the supernatural. The occult can be reached and it does not have God's power. It can be reached without holiness or goodness. The origin of the occult. This, this study is imperative because it is a blow t toward uh, your immortality. So in the midst of the greatest demonstrations of occultism in history, it's time to talk about it. It is a paradox that in our modern scientific world, occultism enjoys great achievements. That's awful. Actually, occultism began in the Garden of Eden. And <laughs> that's how far it goes back. When Eve had communication with the devil, you had the operation of the occult. She believed his lies and she fell from God's grace by believing in the devil. Occultism has plagued man from the fall of man until this very moment in which we live. Its awful scars have been left upon who? Ancient Egypt, full of its magicians and soothsayers. Ancient Babylon had its sorcerers and astrologers. Greece had its legendary gods and goddesses of the stars and the sky and the sea. Rome had its deep mysticism and celestial deities that it worshipped. India and China have their millions of deities of Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism, and so forth. The Near, the Near East has this Mohammedism, which is full of superstitions and, 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 and spiritisms of all kinds. The primitive people, like the American Indians, the Africans, the people of the Isles of the Sea, have their debasing paganism and animism, where they worship anything, a rock, a stone, a tree, a waterfall, or a body of water, a lake, or anything. They, they, they worship their, their demon gods. In the modern manifestations of the occult, you have fortune telling or mind reading, you have crystal gazing, you have tea leaf reading, you have handwriting analysis, you have Ouija boards, you have sorcery, and a lot of this is in what we call Christian homes. Are you here? Amen. You, you have meditation, and we should meditate upon the Word of God, but we should never throw ourselves, our minds open to the devil for him to walk into our minds. You have yoga, you have witchcraft, you have reincarnation. You have Satan worship, you have cults, uh, you have trans, transcend, tr transcendental, uh, tr transcendentalism, and this is an Indian exercise in relaxing the human mind and transcending through an inner power, uh, the, the regular process of, 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 of thought life. Uh, it is dangerous when one permits his mind to be captured by a thought process, and you're saying something that you're speaking to a Hindu god, and that's what your mantra does. Mm, mm. And it's a Hindu God you're talking to. And if you want the devil to come into you, he's open. He's open. And, and so, uh, uh, and you're in it, the, the extra sensory perception or, or ESP. And, and here again, you're, the devil wants to conquer your mind more than he does any other part of you. He doesn't bother about your toes too much. Uh, but your brain he wants. Because your brain is making your decisions about eternity, whether it's in hell or heaven. Aren't you glad you can serve Jesus? Amen. The occult is a satanic attack on the immortality of man. In 1 John 4 and 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Try the spirits, whether they be of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. They, people ask me, says, how do you know when a man's right or not in, in, uh, in, in the cults of false religions? I said, it's very simple. Just say, do you believe in Jesus Christ? He says, yes. Uh, do you believe he is the only begotten son of God? No. Uh, do you believe that you cannot get to heaven any other way except Jesus? Uh, no. Do you believe the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin? No. Well, he's an antichrist. It's very simple. 
And, and, and he'll tell you all the sweet little things in the waterfalls he believes in with the trickling waters, but bring him to the basics. The basic of you're going to heaven is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ or we are not Christians. Amen. So hit the basic. And when you do, they fall to pieces every time, every time, every time. And so you have that and you have 1 Timothy uh, 4 and 1. The occult is a satanic attempt seeking to destroy the immortality uh, of, of the human person. You have 2 Thessalonians 2 and 7 uh, telling you that the lying wonders of these last days are taking place. And they are taking place. Every world empire has been challenged by the occult. There's never been one that hasn't challenged. Uh, some have to be destroyed by, uh, have been destroyed by, by wizards, crystal ball gazers, witchcraft. I could go into that and show you uh, that e even, even Russia may have never fallen in the hands of communism if it had not been of the witchcraft that was at the top right in the Tsar's family uh, in, in Russia. And, and we've got to fight it in Washington, D.C. because it wants to suck in every man in Washington. Right now, they're, they're, they're liars in Washington. I'd like to tell these three men which one of them are going to be the president. Amen. Are you here? Amen. All right. In Romans chapter 1, it shows you why people are deceived. They have refused and turned from the truth. They've made themselves gods, and they, which are not gods at all. They are possessed with the same spirits that were in the wizards and those involved in the witchcraft that came before Moses in Egypt, before Daniel and Babylon. And each challenged uh, the God of Moses and the God of Daniel won. And that God will win today. Amen. America is the number one target in the whole world right now. Uh, millions of books are being printed in our country to deceive Americans. All that you have to do is to ask one thing. What did this thing do to the people from whence it came? <laughs> That'll take care of the problem.